Uh, my name is Vori Ustrell and uh, I'm the coordinator of the, the Performa project. You can see that there are two names on the screen, also Claudio Prandoni, who, uh, who is the communication manager, and we will do uh, this presentation, these webinars, uh, during September, three of them, and we will use the same presentation actually for the introduction, and uh, next time it will be Claudio Prandoni who will do the introduction. Uh, I will briefly introduce you to, to the project. First of all, the Performa project, it is what is called a pre-commercial procurement project, is co-funded by the European Commission uh, under the FP7 program. And the objective is to empower memory institutions to gain full control of the process of conformity tests of files intended for long-term preservation. Uh, we have a website, of course, and if you would like to get in contact with us, you can contact me, the coordinator, but also the technical coordinator, Antonella Fresa, or the communication coordinator, who is, the, as I said, uh, uh, Claudio Prandoni. Uh, and uh, see if we can go to the next one, yes. Uh, the project uh, uh, have 14 partners, and we are split up in two uh, groups, so to speak. First of all, the member institutions who are the procurer, actually, and then we also have technical partners who are helping us in, in different ways. We have Expertise Centrum from Belgium, we have Fraunhofer Gesellschaft, we have also uh, University of Skovde and also the University in Paudian. They have expertise in different fields which we don't have as member institutions. Uh, and we also have Promoter, who is a technical and communication coordinator, is a company in Italy. Uh, we um, can say that the challenge, that what we call the Performa challenge, uh, is uh, something that uh, I see that my video is on. I hope it's on now. Yes, I see that. Hello, everybody, again. Uh, the Performa challenge is, first of all, to develop three open source conformance checkers for electronic documents still images and AV content, uh, that uh, all these um, conformance checkers have to check if a file complies with standard specifications, that is what we call implementation checker, also have to check if a file complies with acceptance criteria of the memory institutions, sometimes uh, the standard is not that clear, so you need to have acceptance criteria also after the specific memory institutions. That is what we call a policy checker. And we also have um, to report back to human and software agents. Uh, that is what we call reporter. And also to uh, perform some simple fixes, what we call metadata fixer. Uh, the other challenge is to set up interoperability mechanisms that allow the integration of the tools into the legacy systems of the member institutions and uh, their extension of, to new formats. And the third challenge is to establish what we call a sustainable community that ensures long-term availability of the software. So these are the, what we call the Performa challenges. Uh, Performance checking in uh, conformance checking in Performa is made three projects, and uh, we have one uh, who is focusing on electronic documents, uh, that is mainly PDF A. We have one focusing on still images, that is Isinova, who is focusing on TIFF, and we have uh, one company who is actually working with audiovisual material, uh, that is uh, media area, and they are focusing on, on MKV and lossless FFFY, etc. And during this first uh, webinar, uh, we will get a demonstration by Easy Inoa then, uh, what they have done in the TIFF field. Uh, we have a unique access point to all the open source projects that we have, where we have the latest downloads, documentations, sample files, issue bug trackers, relevant links, etc. Uh, so there you can find on this address um, uh, most of the things that you are can be interested in. Uh, I also will ask you, uh, encourage you to join our network. We have cultural institutions and other content providers outside the Performa Consortium. They can participate in the refinement of the requirements and also in the definition of the policies to be checked. 
And in addition, they can also contribute to the evaluation assessment of the software by providing data sets to be used to test the prototypes, including both uh, valid, conformed files and corrupted files. And developers can contribute to the improvement of the conformance check by joining the suppliers community. So please join our, our network if you haven't done that before. Uh, next appointment uh, that we have in uh, the project is what we call an experience workshop in Berlin in November. And the objectives uh, for the, this workshop is to demonstrate the use of the conformance checkers for the file formats developed in the project. Involve also the member institutions outside the performer consortium in testing, using and further developing the software, a shared experience gained by the performer member institutions working with developers under research and development service agreements. So uh, if you are interested to um, attend, you can register at the address that you see uh, on this uh, slide. Uh, so you can also follow us uh, on our performer website, performaproject.edu or also on the uh, performer blog, uh, that is uh, digitalmeetculture.net slash performer. Uh, I think it's uh, time now to, to um, go to the next slide, and I think that my, my slides have just been locked here. <laughs> so um, let's uh, call into the screen um, Xavi and Victor from ECNOVA for their presentations. Thank you very much. Hi, welcome everybody to the first DP Financial webinar. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Chavi Torres. I am working as a technical project manager uh, at Isinova. I am responsible of the DP Financial development. Uh, and here you have my email, Chavi Torres at isinova.com. And so please uh, do not hesitate to contact me if you have any question or suggestion that could appear before this webinar. Uh, here with me, with me, there is a Victor Munoz, who is the lead developer of the DPF Major. And again, here is his email, so you can also contact him. Oh, there's a problem with the presentation, but today uh, I'm going to introduce the DPF Manager. Uh, inside the performer project and I'll explain the DPFS, the DPF manager main, main features. DPF, DPF manager is currently under development. Uh, we are in the second prototyping phase. Uh, so I will also explain the common features. Then Victor is going to show the DPF manager in action, uh, showing the different ways to interact with the applications and the different output that the application produce. Uh, I want to also encourage you to participate and contribute uh, in our project. Uh, there are different ways to contribute, uh, how to contribute in the project. So I also want, want to explain these ways. Uh, and finally, we ha will have time to for questions or answers or any doubt that could appear during the presentation. Uh, we also ex expect to receive your feedback from the application, so if any comment is also welcome. In addition, uh, during the presentation, uh, you can use the chat to interact with us, and uh, we will try to answer uh, quick questions. We today uh, we are going to focus in the DPF manager, but I also want to introduce our contribution inside the performer project. Uh, in parallel to the DPF manager development, we have started uh, a standardization process with the objective to define an ISO recommendation for archival TIFs. This activity is led uh, by Lucas Rosenthalen and Peter Franco from Basel University. Uh, we have a community uh, in digital preservation discussing about uh, a draft proposal that is going to be submitted to the ESO working group. Uh, 
uh, and a standard that requires uh, migration of all the teeth uh, that an chief have uh, with lack of the acceptation for uh, a chief activist community. So they are also studying the kind of teeth they the chief stores. This is a research project that they are doing now. One of the goals of the, our project is to create a community around the project. So we doctors that use DPF manager, send us feedback about the application, uh, how we could improve uh, the application, and uh, of course developers that could uh, contribute creating new features for the DPF manager. This is our three parts of the project, the community. So I have introduced a little bit the TS standard. Uh, TIF is here. The archive uh, have uh, TIF. They are also now an alternative uh, like DIC 1000 or DMZ, but uh, the archive have TIF. So uh, when uh, we start the project, we realize that the no of the ISOs that currently have TIF are able to validate the TIF for uh, digital preservation. TIF uh, have a complex and flexible structure that an image could be uh, stored using different approaches. So um, we uh, would like to create a, a strategy that has uh, followed the PDF. Uh, PDF has uh, a standard for an archival that had marked some features that are forbidden and some features that are located. So we want to use the same approach to define uh, the TIF uh, the TIF standard. The TIF standard is now in progress. So we have a community of TIF experts that uh, are working on defining and discussing about the convenience of uh, DAC, that is, it should be mandatory or forbidden, and uh, then I want to invite you to participate to the, our community. Now I'm going to talk about the DPF manager. Uh, DPF manager is a TIF conformance checker. So it doesn't, what does it mean? Uh, DPF manager is able to uh, define a acceptance criterion based on the TIF baseline uh, and also of the two different ISOs, so the TIF AP and the TIF ET. Uh, not now, but at the end of the project, we have the when we're, the first draft was submitted to the ISO, we could uh, validate the TIFs over our this uh, new standard. It's not really a new for format. Is a group of recommendations for a TIF for a cable TIF. This is important to remark. Uh, and also, we are working in the TIF identification. Um, even if you don't define your accident security based on any the TIF ISO or AP or IT, it's also important to have this information. It's important to know what is this TIF and its conformance to the ISO. So we are playing uh, the TIF identification and droid functionality but please don't rely with droid for the identifications the droid only use uh, signatures not really check uh, the file over the an, an standard we also want to create a report that uh, contains all the information that could extract property and present this information uh, in understandable way so uh, we want to we are working in a new report that knows it is the actual report that is uh, producing the DBF manager that is based on the standards so uh, the report is going to use the major standard uh, and also you will to use the LISO for the TIF uh, still at image information and also going to use the primes for uh, to define the acceptance ready of the DPS manager. I'm going to uh, talk more about it uh, 
in the common room. One of the important part is also the metadata. Uh, in the TIFF, the metadata could, could be stored in very different in different kinds of containers, as you may know. Uh, you can uh, have uh, metadata information inside the XMP or EPTC or even in the ECC profile. And uh, when an editor uh, opens a TIFF and writes it, uh, maybe uh, could uh, not modify the data, the, this metadata property. So uh, we are uh, creating a way to identif identify the metadata inconsistency and uh, with the image manager we will be able to uh, fix this inconsistency in the, this metadata. And of course you also could create uh, custom policy rules based on the uh, properties, for example the width, the height of the image or uh, the pixel density that you will see in the demo. What are the main features of the DBF Manager? The DBF Manager is a multi-platform, so you can execute it in Windows, Mac, or Linux. It's flexible, so we can interact with the command line or with the a graphical user interface or with a server or a client. The important part here is that the, uh, whatever the interface you are using, you are using the same application. So in the demo, you will see that uh, when you create a check using the graphical user, using the command line interface, you will see the same the, the same check in the graphical user interface. Now, uh, Victor is going to show us. DPF managers have uh, have a modular architecture, so we have designed the architecture using modules, so that let the developers to easily create new modules that interact with existing modules. We also organize the uh, design the product using the latest technologies that Java offers. Uh, Java is the, the developer language that we have used for the project, but we rely on uh, well-defined uh, well and existing frameworks from Java, like it's a Spring, uh, JavaFX. Let me now uh, introduce the user scenarios as I explained, uh, there are, we have the graphical interface, we say we have the command line interface. We also have a client that could communicate with a server. Uh, we have a web application that Victor is going to show us. And the four uh, use scenario is the high ability. Uh, this manager is going to be able to, uh, one client is going to be able to interact with different servers. So uh, when you create a check, this uh, TIFF is going to uh, be distributed over the different uh, servers to improve the performance. One of our goals is the integration with the OIS system. Uh, we're checking that using OIS model or a DAM that is using an OIS model. So uh, in the new report that we are going to release, it's nearly finished, uh, we have taken into all, all this part. So uh, we have organized the information using the latest standard that is an, a, a, maybe in a type of uh, archival information packets that define the OIs. So uh, with the DPF measure, we would uh, create checks during the creation time or when you are transferring uh, TIFF uh, from archives to another archive, or you are immigration files to your commission, a raw file for a, or a, a to a TIFF, or uh, you want to check uh, your digitalization, or uh, is the digitalization is external, you can check the digitalization that has made a com is a conformance to your acceptance criteria. DBS Manager is an open source project. Uh, we have a license team with about uh, open source license that is required for a performer project. Uh, we have the DPF manager website. Uh, you could also check our GitHub uh, page or the part of our uh, in the performer project, our section, option section. Uh, our main work is uh, is done in, with uh, GitHub. 
So if you have any zoo and uh, you have experience using uh, GitHub, you can submit any zoo using uh, GitHub. What have now in the DPF manager? What do you have in this current version that this was released is August? Uh, now the conformance checker is is able to test the baseline, the two ISOs. Uh, you can create policy rules. Uh, you can add, edit, or remove metadata and apply auto fixes in these files. Uh, these auto fixes uh, are uh, uh, functions that the developers could add using a module to uh, work with this. We have uh, the interface, different interfaces that the uh, is going to show us. And we also have provided this modular architecture that I told uh, that the is uh, make us easy to develop or implement new policies, uh, new implementations, and create auto fixes or design a complete new model to interact with the other models. What is in the next version? Uh, in the next versions, uh, we will have the graph of the T4 archival, so you could check if a TIF is uh, following the the uh, specifications. Uh, as I explained, uh, we will create the TIF identification uh, feature, so you could identify a field, a TIF file. Uh, we also want to, uh, to create uh, new uh, policies. This is important because uh, uh, we also want to, to give this feedback about which policies you use in your main institution to validate or to define an acceptance criteria for a TIF. Uh, regarding to the metadata, uh, we are working on uh, uh, collecting and being able to read and write metadata from the EPTC profile, so from the EPTCs, uh, the tag and fix inconsistency metadata, and the tag and report file provenances using uh, the XMP. Uh, information or inconsistency metadata, we 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 are able to uh, to see and speculate over the file provenance. So uh, if uh, we would define that uh, Photoshop has used has been used to create this TIFF from a RAW, or uh, if uh, Photoshop has added a new ECC profile, so uh, we want to report all this information. As I explained. Uh, we are working on a match profile report. Uh, this match profile should contain, we contain the struct map that is going to report the internal TIFA structure. This is important for us because, uh, as I said before, uh, TIF is complex, is flexible, and the image could be stored with different manuals. So uh, we will be able to, to report the struct, the real struct of that uh, structure of that TIFF. We also, uh, we are going to report administrative metadata, uh, reporting the technical metadata. We use the ISO standard to report the information of each image that the one TIFF contains. Uh, we also report the rights and the digital provenance of the file. So. Um, in this uh, digital provenance, we also uh, include uh, using the primes uh, all the information that the DPF manager produces. So you could see the what DPF manager version has been used, which configuration has been used to check these files, and the result of the acceptance criteria of the of, of the DPF manager, showing all the errors uh, that have uh, been able to form. And at the last uh, part, uh, we are going to introduce the conformance checker integrity. So, uh, with DPF manager, you could also check uh, PDFs using the Vera PDF software or videos using the media coach. Now it's time to see the DPF manager in action. So, uh, Victor is going to take the control of the room.
Hello, I am Victor from Easy. I guess you all hear me and that you can see the my desktop that I am sharing. Well, why I am talking, Xavi will be on the chat. So if you have any question or doubt, you can ask uh, or you can also interrupt me if you want. So this is the main window of the DPF Manager graphical user interface. As Xavi said, uh, there is also a command line interface and also the client server mode, which I will also show later. But we start with the graphical user interface because it's more visual and more easy to understand. The main window has basically a place to define the files or folders to be checked and the configuration to be used for the validation. The DPF manager comes with some basic predefined configurations, but typically the users or the organizations that use the program will uh, use this that use this tool will define uh, their own configurations with their particular rules policies that they need to to check for their archives we can create uh, new configurations and also edit some of the existing ones or delete them so let's create a new configuration and so I will show the options that are available for validating. To create a new configuration, there are uh, five steps. The first step is to choose the ISOs that we want our files to conform with. The available options in the current version are these ones, the TIFF baseline 6, the TIFF EP and the TIFF IT with its two profiles, one and two. But in future versions, we will also add the TA uh, recommendations as a new option. So we check one or more of them and continue to the next step. The second step is the policy checker where we can define rules that are particular to our institution or restrictions that we want to achieve in our archive to consider it as valid. For example, we can define that we have a requirement for the image in our archive to have a minimum width of, for example, 1000 pixels and that we also want that our images have a minimum height of 800. We can also define uh, rules related to the pixel density or the number of images in the TIFF file, because in TIFF files you can have multiple images in a cell file or also related to the bit dev, the dots per image or several other possibilities. For example, we can put another restriction that we only want, we only want uh, images that are in RGB format or uh, say CMYK. We can also define uh, warning rules so that instead of errors, they will produce only uh, warnings or alerts. For example, we could, uh, although we accept the CMYK, we may want to display a warning if an image is in this format. And we can uh, also define rules related with image that are with more technical aspects of the image of the TIFF file, like, for example, the byte order, the planner configuration, or other things. And in the footer, more options will be added in, in next releases. In the next step, we define the format of the report that will be generated. 
which can be in HTML format or XML, JSON, PDF. And we also can specify a specific location to store the report. Or if we don't you want to use the default for folder that is in the DPF manager folder. And in the fourth step is the metadata fixer where we can find changes or fixes to be made in the image. The original image will never be modified. Instead, a new image will be created if we set a fix or fixes to be done. For example, we can choose to clear the private data. This means to remove the tags related to the GPS location uh, where the image was taken. Or we can uh, also add uh, or remove uh, metadata. For now, uh, we can add this metadata information, the image description, copyright, and artist. But in the future releases, we uh, more fixes will be will be added. And the final step is well is just a, a summary of the of the configuration that we have defined with the ISO that we have selected and the, the policy rules that we want to, to achieve, the report format and the fixes. So we can save the config with a name and also we can put a custom description. And now the config appears in the configuration box. So each time we run the DPF manager, we will have the configurations that we have created will be all available in this list. So we can simply select it and then select the files or folders that we want to check. In this case, I will take this one and start a check. When the validation starts, uh, the tasks widget appears where we can see the, the tasks that are running or finish it. We also have a console widget that shows some information on the on the run of the program. This is, works as a log. When the task is finished, we can see the generated report. In this case, this has been in HTML format. The report has two parts. In the first part, we see a summary of the of the check. In this case, we have only, only selected one file, but we could select a folder or several files. So this shows a summary of the whole uh, validation check, where we can see the total number of files processed and the ones that conform to the baseline profile or to the policy checker and also a graphical uh, chart of the result. And here at the bottom, we see the list of, of images that have been checked and uh, some information about them, mainly the errors and warnings that have been found. In this case, there, is, there isn't any error. And if we open the, a single file report, we see the report for a single image. This is more, uh, this contains more extended information. In the top, we see the errors and warnings that have been found. And then here we can see uh, some information of the image. For example, the width, the length, the reach per sample, the compression, etc. And in the right, we can see the structure of the file. In this case, this image contains an exif container, XMP metadata, IPTC, and also an ICC profile. And if we check them, we can also see their, the tags of each container. And if there were er errors there, they are shown in, the, in these tables. So, now I am going to make another check of a folder in this case. Yes, this folder. And we will take another configuration. 
and now the task is just started. In this case, there are about more than 20 files, so you can see that it's pretty fast. The velocity of the king is, in our tests, uh, between 10 and 20 files per second. So here is the the summary report where we can see that we have checked 26 files. Uh, nine of them conform to the baseline and the other are errors because I have taken a folder that contains many errors in this case. So we can see for each image the number of errors that have been found and at the bottom the images that are correct some with some warnings. For example, if we open this one, for example, this image is not correct, so it has an error. And here we can see the errors that contain. In this case, the error is that the, the declared size of the image does not match with the real size of the, the number of pixels that contains, because I had put zero image width in this file. OK, uh, in the report section, if we go here, we can see a table of all of the reports that we have made in previous executions. For each case, we see the date, the time, the number of files checked, and some of the results, the errors, warnings, and files that are correct, and uh, the score. And also the, formal, the formats that we have used for the reports. For example, in this case, I generated an XML report that is, well, it's XML. And we can see also a PDF report that is pretty similar to the HTML. Um, now I am going to check to show the periodical checks. It is a functionality of the DPF manager that is quite interesting. We can uh, program checks to be made uh, periodically. For example, uh, I can specify a periodical check to validate um, this folder, for example, with uh, this configuration, and I want to make it every day at uh, 15, uh, 40, for example. So every day at this time, a check will be made. We can also make checks uh, weekly, once a week, and specify the, the days at which we want to, to make the, the check. And we also can make uh, checks monthly and specify here the, the specific day of the month where we want to, to make the, the check. And now when it's time at this hour, an automatic task will be started. And we will see that a task is started here in the in the tasks widget. Here it is, because it's time to the check. So the check has been made. Uh, it's not needed for the graphical user interface to be open for the task to work because it is a programmed task in the in the Windows uh, system. But if we have the program open it, we can see the, the task that appears. We can see that he, this task is from the command line, from the command line, and the others were for the graphical interface. Uh, in this case, we analyzed six files with this uh, results: three errors and three correct files. Okay, now I'm going to show the command line interface. The command line interface goes with the CMD and we have to run it by uh, writing DPF manager console. Without arguments, it says the, the help. And we can say, for example, the version. Okay. And to make a check, we only need to specify 
the location of the folder where we have the files that we want to check, for example, this one. And we also have to specify that configuration, the configuration that we want to use for the check, this one. Exactly. And when I start the check, also, as I have the GUI open, the task hopefully will appear here. Okay, the task has been started and it is here also. And we can see the report that is, well, it is, it is the same that the previous one. Uh, finally, there is also the third way to use the DPF manager that is by using the client server mode. For using it in this way, we have to start the DPF manager in server mode only with this command. And now the DPF manager server is started at this IP and with this port. So we could uh, make, che make checks remotely in another computer by uh, sending a check to this uh, IP and port. This is what the online validator that we have in our website uh, does exactly. Here we have the online validator that sends a check to the server that we have in, in the server. For example, we can specify here uh, an image this one, for example, select a configuration and start the check. So the task starts. This is pretty similar to the to the graphical user interface. And here we can also see exactly the same the same report of the of the image. Okay, then so this is all I wanted to to show about the demo. So if you have any questions or I don't know if Chavi, do you want to ask to add something? No, that is all. Uh, maybe uh, you should point that, for example, when you select a folder, you could select a folder from different... Not a send to Chavi. Oh. Sorry. 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 Uh, I only want to a point, for example, that uh, when you select a, a folder, you would select a folder from different archivers uh, because it was a requirement for a member institutions. Some member institutions uh, distribute uh, the div to check uh, over different archivers to improve the, 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 the performance of the check because uh, most of the time the, the check is uh, not fast because we have to read the diff on the hard drive, and it is uh, the, the bottleneck here, the, the hard drive, easily. So you are able to distribute your files in different uh, hard drivers and select these hard drivers to check. And for uh, for the demo, uh, uh, it's done. It's done. I only have to add that. Uh, you could visit our uh, web page. Maybe Victor is going to show us in her desktop. Uh, uh, the web page, uh, PDF Manager. Uh, we have the web page when you where you could download the application. Uh, you could see that there are uh, distributions for different operation uh, uh, systems, and you could select. Uh, we could also uh, select the different versions that we have. Uh, you could also uh, look for the documentation. Uh, we also would like to uh, encourage you. This is uh, the web page. Uh, you could see the the community. You could see that you could uh, create, go to the download. This is a community area. is for the developers. Uh, we have a blog here. 
Uh, we also have the download section uh, where you can do download application, as I say, with the different uh, operation systems. And we are also want to encourage you to visit the, the TIA standard initiative and join. It's extremely easy. You only have to, to go inside. And if you think that you could collaborate uh, with our initiative, because you have a, 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 a extensive knowledge of the TIF uh, and or digital preservation. So uh, I want to encourage to, to visit uh, our page, uh, yeah.org and get involved. You only have to uh, check your email and, and uh, register. And then uh, the, you will give, give access you to the TIA experts platform, where there are discussions about the, the different aspects of the TIF. So if a tag should be allow it or not allow it for digital preservation on this kind of things. Um, as, uh, and at last, if you are a developer and you are interested to create uh, a, fun a new functionality, you could visit uh, our GitHub and contribute as a normal open, open source project when uh, make a fork and, cre and create pull requests if you have any modification. Or if you only want to communicate us uh, to uh, to create a new uh, feature, you could uh, create an issue, for example, on, on our repository, we have done an issues where the people uh, ask us for a new uh, features or, or for a, an issue with the, the application the loss as expected. Uh, here we have the, the milestone with, with the current development of the DPF manager with the releases. different releases and, and versions. And for now, for for us, that's all. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And now you can feel free to ask us for any question or, uh, that could appear during the presentation. Thank you very much. And, OK, they asked for if you have plans to extend the TIF. Uh, for four and five version, for the four and five, five version, uh, unfortunately, uh, not for now. Uh, it's not a, a fun to create this uh, conformance checker for uh, validate or the diff. Uh, Although, of course, uh, any developer could uh, extend our library to, to take uh, to take into account that uh, the TIFF version is. The, the TIFF, uh, our approach to create an, an implementation checker is using an, an XML document, which defines all the rules. So, it's, uh, it's really easy to create uh, a new implementation uh, using the same structure. Uh, we have a structure to define rules and define what we check. We have we check. Uh, and but I have to uh, look because I think that uh, it's, it's difficult to. I don't know if there is a version tag, uh, Victor, of the, in the TIFF. I don't know because I have a few knowledge about the TIFF uh, version four and five. I think that uh, I have found the TIFF four version, but uh, never the five version. For example, the specific, uh, list of the specifications. Uh, we expect to have uh, at least the drafts of the TIFF standard uh, by the end of the project, of course. Uh, this is uh, 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 the end of October. We expect to at least uh, starting to check the, this first draft. Uh, this is not uh, the final TIA standard, of course, because the, the TIA standard has to be submitted to the uh, ISO uh, working group and to be and then to be approved. But uh, the, the first draft that at least uh, the DPF manager will give you advice 
uh, of a TFO for a archival purpose and for long term preservation, it will be uh, for the October. Then, of October, we have the version with this few stuff implemented. Yes, uh, regarding to the question about the compression, uh, we check the TIF implementation that supports that that kind of compression. Uh, if you refer to the TIA standard, uh, I don't know the stage of the discussion uh, between the, the compression, uh, because uh, I think that uh, LZ, LZ compression has uh, some patent issues, uh, not in Europe and in America, but I don't know the stage in an, another uh, parts of the world. Um, this is a discussion inside the, the TIA standard internet that, uh, as I say, based on the city lead. Uh, so maybe you could ask there, or uh, I can you can send me an email and I can put you in contact with uh, Peter Fonara, for example, that uh, that could answer this question. But if you are uh, talking about uh, the implementation uh, of the TIF, of course, uh, we, we check the file uh, independent of the time of compression. But uh, as you will show, you can create rules based on the on the compression to define your own acceptance criteria. So if you would use uh, loseless compression, if you will accept files with loseless compression, you can define. I also want to encourage to you to, uh, to try the to do, do the program by yourself to test it, and uh, and please send us uh, feedback. Uh, we enjoy to receive feedback for a, a user that does our, our applications. Uh, some users send me, oh, I couldn't check that file, or I have a piece that uh, we are we are not able even to open it. And uh, let me what do you think about it? Because uh, during the development we have uh, reached knowledge about TIF, so we are able to 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 see what is inside the TIF, even uh, if any program can open it. So we can uh, evaluate in in X uh, editor and see if uh, it's relative or not. If the TIF, or what is happening with the file? Uh, we are extremely interested on uh, TIF with issues. Because uh, most of there are some deep uh, writer that produce these kind of issues, and uh, for us it's extremely interesting to to see uh, what what happened with that diff. So, what is the the error for that diff that produce? And of course, uh, feedback about the, the application. And I received some comments about uh, I don't like the big logo though. So in the next race, I have we have changed. It. I agree, the logo is too big. Designer, uh, designer, uh, too big logo. So we, in the next version, the the size of the logo is going to be really reduced. So we we take we really take it into account all all the uh, comments that we receive. Uh, so uh, or regarding to the policy. Uh, some new institutions say that, that they want to detect uh, black pages in the TIFF, so we create a, a specific policy to detect bl uh, blank pages uh, because uh, some scanners produce an error and they started to create blank pages. So we we, uh, we, we would like to implement this, this kind of policies because it's difficult to, to, to have knowledge about all the institutions, all the cases, and then you could see the different cases. and. Although that is very, very interesting. Um, okay, I think that's probably um, all we have time for. So, thanks very much, uh, Victor, Davi, and Bria, and thank you everyone for attending. We'll make these slides and recording available through the former website, and we'll send an email round about that. And yep, do get in touch with. Um, Easy and develop from it if you have any questions. So, thanks very much and bye for now. Thank you. Bye and thank you.
बाय